Why is water so cool? We are mostly water. Water makes up about 70 to 85 percent of your body. The more muscle you have, the more water you have. Water is polar. Polar means that one side of the molecule is slightly more positive than the other side. In terms of water, water is made of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. The hydrogen side of the water molecule is slightly positive. The oxygen side of the molecule is slightly negative. This makes water like a little molecular magnet. Because of this, water dissolves other polar materials. The, the statement to help you remember this is likes dissolve likes. In other words, water, since it is polar, will dissolve other polar things. So polars dissolve polars. If something is nonpolar, it will not dissolve in water. In order to dissolve something that is nonpolar, you would have to use another substance that is nonpolar. An example of that would be like nail polish remover. Nail polish is a nonpolar substance. Nail polish remover is also nonpolar, which is why nail polish remover can remove nail polish. Okay, so as Mr. Delbaccio told you, water is polar. What that means is water has the ability to do lots of cool things. One of the things it can do is it can actually attract to one another. So we talked about how the water molecule has a polar end and a negative end. Well, the positive end is one side, and that's made up of the hydrogens. The other side is the oxygen, and that's negative. Now, the way I remember this is I think a water molecule looks like Mickey Mouse. His ears are the hydrogen because that's where he can hear. The O is his nose, and the negative is kind of like his mouth. So you know what side is negative. Now, when water molecules attract to one another, they actually orientate themselves so that the positive ends are attracted to the negative ends. And this causes them to actually bond, and we call that a hydrogen bond. And those are really strong bonds that are able to hold things together like the DNA in your body. Now, when water bonds together, it causes something called cohesion. And cohesion means attraction between molecules of the same substance. Kind of like how if you have a cohesive group, that means that all of the members of that group are very close to one another. And that's how the water molecules are. Cohesion produces something called surface tension, which I'm sure you're a little bit more familiar with than you'd actually like to be. Have you ever jumped off a diving board and landed on your belly? All of a sudden, you go smack and you wind up hitting that water molecule. The reason you feel like you're floating for a second 
is because you're breaking those hydrogen bonds. That's what holds you up. It's also what holds you up when you're floating on a lazy river or if you've ever seen insects like the one shown in the picture walking on water. By looking into the invisible world of high speed, we discover extraordinary events, even in something as ordinary as a garden pond. These little creatures, water striders, had long been a bit of a mystery. Nobody could work out quite how they could propel themselves across the surface of the water so quickly. They can scoot forward nearly two meters every second. And they're achieving something of biblical proportions, actually walking on water, skating across the surface without sinking. Only by seeing what time usually renders invisible to us can we understand what's really going on. And it's got something to do with what's about to happen here. Normally this is too fast to see. But watch what happens in slow motion as the droplet of milk hits the water surface. Instead of breaking, the water surface stretches, bouncing the milk drop back up into the air. The water behaves as if it has a thin elastic film on the surface. It's called surface tension. And it's this elastic membrane that allows the water strider to stand on the water rather than sinking into it. He's also using that elastic surface tension to catapult himself across the pond at the equivalent of about 600 miles an hour. In coloured water, we can see the force of the strider's legs as they push across the surface. a high-speed artist of the invisible world. To us, this is just a pond, but to the water strider, it's a giant trampoline. Wow, wasn't that a great video about bugs? Next we have uh, water showing adhesion. Okay, With adhesion, what you have is an attraction between uh, molecules of a different substance. So mainly it's the water molecules being attracted to the sides of uh, glass or the side of um, any type of substance. And this, this causes capillary action. Um, and what happens in capillary action, you have water that rises up um, against gravity and it draws that water up and up and up and the video that you're going to see next is um, showing just that with paper towels and colored water
Okay, so next what we're going to talk about is how water expands when it freezes. Now, I don't know how many of you guys have done this, but if you've ever put, in, put a soda can or pop bottle full of uh, pop in a freezer and leave it there, you might come back and find that it's expanded after it's frozen and made a huge mess in your freezer. Um, so with this understanding, it, it's, it's pretty easy to see that water, when it freezes, it does expand. Okay, it does get bigger, it, it, it becomes larger in size. Okay, uh, the next thing we're going to look at is how water resists the change in temperature. Okay, in, in chemistry you're going to learn about uh, specific heat, uh, but we'll kind of take it down to a level that, you know, you guys will be able to understand here right now in biology. Um, it takes a lot of energy to cause uh, a change in temperature, whether it's an increase or decrease for water. Um, now this kind of explains our lake effect that we have with Lake Michigan. Um, in the summertime, you might notice when you go downtown, you might have to bring a sweatshirt or a long sleeve because the temperature is a little bit cooler. And then in the wintertime, when you go uh, downtown, you might notice that it's maybe 5 degrees warmer. And that has to do with a large body of water that we have uh, next to the city of Chicago, Lake Michigan. Um, that body of water takes a great amount of time uh, throughout the summer to actually cool down okay so that's why or sorry heat up and that's why it, uh, it resists that temperature change okay so it also explains why people like to live near water because it kind of regulates that that temperature that we have okay and then water having a high heat of vaporization is is the last uh, I guess point that we have to talk about with water and uh, it takes a lot of energy to turn water from a liquid into a gas and maybe you guys have seen this when you're boiling water when you make spaghetti or macaroni and cheese, you know, it takes a couple minutes, even if you have a constant flame on that water. Um, and what this does is um, when you sweat, it, it kind of helps keep you cool, okay? When, you, when your body sweats, it produces liquid through your pores, and eventually that, that water evaporates, and it's going to cool you down, okay? So that heat gets pulled away from your body, keeping you guys cool. That's why water... Is so cool. Blah, 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 blah.